All right, time to finish off with rapid reaction. A lot of topics, a little bit of time. Take us away, drink. Let's roll, baby. Baseball Hall of Famer Hank Aaron has passed away at the age of 86. Your thoughts on his, on his legacy, Jay? Uh, not enough time in a day to talk about the greatness of Hank Aaron, but uh, quite, quite simply, one of the best to ever do it. Uh, some still regard him as the uh, true and rightful home run king with 755 home runs. Um, but f you know, overall, fantastic career and, you know, loved and cherished by everyone that uh, everyone that knew him. Notre Dame football is being placed on a one year probation for recruiting violations. Big deal, little deal, no deal. All right. So funny thing, right? Notre Dame is one of three teams that got put on violation for the same recruit. Um, it was like Notre Dame, Florida, and I think the third team, the third team, alludes me. The reason this is funny is because the recruit in question, Savion Small, the linebacker, he actually committed to Washington. So three teams, maybe I don't think it's Tennessee, but three teams get in trouble for this guy, and he don't go to any one of these three teams, which is wild. <laughs> and, and then it turns out the kid didn't have that awesome of a first year. So you might be in trouble for just like just not doing your due diligence. Um, to answer the question. I'm going to say uh, this is a little deal just because, you know, these three programs got in trouble for this guy and he didn't go to any one of the three programs. It would be a bigger deal if he had actually went to one of the programs because then you would probably have a Tennessee type issue. But, yeah, I'm going to go with little deal on that one. The NBA has rescinded a technical foul from Golden State Warriors forward Draymond Green after a referee ejected him from Thursday night game for yelling at him. But in return, Green was yelling, actually yelling at rookie center James Wiseman. What's your reaction to this? Uh, it's, I think it's unfortunate. I mean, it's one of those things where you like the, you know, the referees to get to, together and communicate. And, you know, you'd like to see the rejection ascended if it truly wasn't deserved. But on the flip side, it's one of the, the side effects of being a guy with a reputation who just right. always yelling at people. So, I mean, in some respects, you feel bad for Draymond Green, but – that's what comes with your reputation. Former Lions head coach Matt Patricia is returning to New England to work for Bill Belichick and the Patriots. What do you make of this development? The same thing I make for the development of college coaches that go back to Nick Saban after um, a, a failed attempt. Here's the deal. Everybody want to be the man until they are the man, and then you realize, dang, being the man is tough. And, you know, what I think, what I do like about this situation with Matt Patricia or what, what they do in college with Alabama is, you take your licks, you go back, you sit down with the goats, and you say, what did I do wrong? Where did I go wrong? At? And you can you can fix that and then get another shot. We've seen that with Josh McDaniels. Josh McDaniels. He goes, he fails, he come back, kind of, you know, re-erect his career, and then he get off of a job, and we know what happens after that. But, you know what I'm saying? I don't, I, it's nothing wrong. Like, that's what naturally people do. You usually do that with your parents, right? You go out, you learn something. You fail, you come back, you ask your parents, what did I do wrong? They sit down and say A, B, and C, and then you go readjust and try it again. So I'm not mad at it. I actually, you know, I applaud him for having enough, uh, for putting his ego to the side and going back and talking to Bill and going back on that staff and try to fix the things he did wrong. So I applaud him on that. Chicago's Cup third baseman, Chris Bryant said, he's not having as much fun as he used to in an interview with Barstool Sports Podcast. What, I mean, you have any advice for him, Jay? Retire. <laughs> if it's not, if it's not fun, if it's not fun anymore. And I mean, that's, I mean, I, I think in all, in all seriousness, like the, that's the root of like all sports and all athletic competition is to have fun. Um, right. So, I mean, retire, but I mean, he's not going to retire because I guarantee he likes that, that sweet paycheck he's getting. And I, I'd like that sweet paycheck he's getting, too, if I, <laughs> if I be honest. The Texans have interviewed Josh McCown and Jim Caldwell for their head coaching vacancy. Uh, who would you hire between those two candidates? Jim Caldwell. I like, hey, oh, hey, Josh McCown, you want to be our backup quarterback? Like, I, don't, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. Yeah, I'm going with Jim Caldwell. Why? Proven commodity. He didn't done it. Some people say he got fired unfairly in his last job. They, they you know got a uh, well not unfairly I say prematurely um in his last job with Detroit so yeah I'm, I'm gonna go with the proven commodity I'm gonna go with Jim Caldwell Josh McCann good quarterback maybe you can go in the booth and pull the Tony Romo I probably like you better there 
than a head coach. So, yeah, that, that's my thoughts on that. After an eight-year career with the 49ers and the Steelers, tight end Vance McDonald has retired. What are your thoughts on his career? Uh, somewhat, you feel it was somewhat of a disappointment. I felt like when he, once he got to Pittsburgh, you really saw some flashes where he could, you know, really maybe be a, you know, a, a above average tight end, but it seemed like injuries kind of slowed him down throughout, but I'll always remember him for that, uh, that Monday night stiff arm. He that applied to, arm. Yeah. to Chris Conti, you know, that was what, what an, an <laughs> iconic play, you know, and matter of fact, if you pull up the ESPN uh, article, that's the, that, you know, that reads off as the retirement that's that's the video that they have playing, which you know why wouldn't you <laughs> still right. still can't believe it? I don't don't think we've heard from Chris Conti since then. Uh, right. WBC announced they'll be adding Floyd Mayweather Jr.'s picture to all the green and gold uh, WBC belts. Uh, any thoughts on that? Yeah, man, uh, wonderful. Um, I think that's a wonderful gesture by the uh, WBC. Um, to to it, it shows you the greatness of Floyd Mayweather Jr. as a boxer now. People, let's please separate the boxer from the person. Like, you know, people like, they like to be like, oh, he's sort of a horrible person. Okay, but I'm talking about the boxer. Mike Tyson was a horrible person, but he was a terrifying boxer. He was a fighter. And and I think for Floyd Mayweather Jr., this is an honor. Um, and it's, it's a testament to his career as a boxer to have your picture on all the belts for the WBC. For those that don't know, WBC is one of the four major boxing councils um so you know to have your pitch on those belts next to muhammad ali and some of the other greats is is a hell of an honor and i I think it's well deserved when you go back and look at his boxing career as one of the greats the boston red sox have signed former los angeles dodger kike hernandez to a two-year 14 million dollar deal what do you think of this signing Oh, that's pretty good. I think the probably the best thing um, you get out of it is you get defensive versatility. He's a guy that can play a, a lot of different uh, positions. So he'll give uh, he'll give Alex Cora some uh, flexibility in how he uh, manages his roster and his lineups. Uh, but of course, he's um, he's not Buki Betts. I'm sure the the Red Sox would much prefer to have him back and have him re- back on the team. But oh well, they don't. Tonight it's UFC 257. Poirier and McGregor. The second fight of that on ESPN plus pay-per-view at the Ethad arena in Abu Dhabi. The main event is a UFC lightweight bout between the second rank contender, Dustin Poirier and the fourth rank contender, Conor McGregor. Who you got? The King is back. Um, Listen, I'm, I'm Con- Conor McGregor. who I got, uh, but I would say this, this is a very tough fight that Conor McGregor agreed to after being gone for pretty much a, a year. Uh, year layoff. Dustin Poirier is a hell of a fighter. That's why he's number two and Conor McGregor's number four. And you think about this, Conor McGregor has been the lightweight champion. He's been the champion of this division. Dustin Poirier has been the interim champ of this division. Um, so this is, you know, a hell of a fight. Like you mentioned, this is the second fight. The first fight ended re- relatively fast. Conor McGregor knocks out um, technical knockout, um, punched him. That you know, it's a very questionable punch as some people like to uh, put out because it, it seems as if Connor had punched Dustin Poirier in the back of the head. Problem was, it wasn't intentional. It's just one of those things when you get to punching at a rapid rate, sometimes you do clip an area you shouldn't. However, Dustin Poirier, do, do not use that as an excuse. He just said Connor McGregor was the better man that night. So this fight is highly anticipated. Why? One, you're going to have, you know, roughly – I heard something about seven, maybe 7,000 fans. I don't know how true that is, but that's what I heard. So maybe 7,000 fans in the arena. And I do believe, you know, against the contrary of what you've been hearing in the, in the MMA community, the winner of this fight will fight Khabib next, I think. Um, just because these two dudes seem to be the most polarizing and the toughest competition you can get for the title. No disrespect to the other contenders in the division, but Khabib then pretty much wiped up all the competition, to be perfectly honest. And since he gets to pick who he fight next, this fight would go a long way to his next contender for the lightweight championship. So Conor McGregor, I think he get him out of there in, in, in somewhere in the first four rounds. I don't think it goes as fast as the first fight, just because Dustin Poirier is a different fighter, a tougher fighter, and he'd have been through a lot since the first fight. So, yeah, I'm going Conor McGregor knockout somewhere in the first four rounds. 
All right, that concludes today's Drink of Wisdom. Like, share, subscribe. We'd appreciate it all. Thanks for joining us today. I'm Jay Wise. And I'm Nathan Drinking. And remember, make tomorrow better than today and make today better than yesterday. And you know what we're going to do. We're going to holler at you until next time, baby.